I'm Jim W6LG or YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Today we're going to visit Ridgeland, Mississippi and the Fox Mike Hotel and its proprietor Frank M. Howell, K4FMH. Frank has come up with a sortable spreadsheet that I found really interesting and I think you will too, especially if you're in the market for a new receiver, a new transceiver. Frank has taken the data from Rob Sherwood at Sherwood Engineering, all that many years of data, and put it into a sortable spreadsheet that we can download, that we can maneuver, delete columns, add columns, sort A to Z, Z to A, one to infinity, infinity to one, zero. Um, and, and it's all available to us at no charge at his website of K4FMH. So let's go there now, take a look at it, and look at the columns on the spreadsheet. And then after that, in the next episode, we're going to look at what I did. And that is I took some of that data, removed the data that wasn't important to me, and the uh, receivers and transceivers that were not on my potential list. We'll talk about those in the next episode. But for now, let's go to K4FMH and take a look at, and I'll put a link below, at um, what Frank has come up with. By the way, uh, Frank is a professor emeritus at uh, Mississippi State University and an adjunct professor at um, uh, Emory University. He's been an avid shortwave listener, DXer for a very long time. He's a very active ham radio operator and interested in um, receiver performance, uh, signal to noise, those kinds of things. So we're going to benefit from many, many hours of effort to come up with this spreadsheet. So let's, let's go there now. Okay, so here we are, k4fmh.com. The title of this blog is Sortable Sherwood, K4FMH, dated March 24th, 2022. Sherwood Tests and Measurements. One of the most valuable tools for amateurs worldwide to use when evaluating HF rigs is the set of bench tests that Rob Sherwood NC0B has provided for quite a number of years now. He ranks the received tests by his favorite metric, narrow dynamic range in DB. He is a key for CW contest operators, which he is in spades. But is in frequent question from readers of Rob's table, why can't I sort on another criteria? Especially if I'm not a CW contest operator. Well, now you can. Working directly with Rob, NC0B, Frank says he's taken the latest received test data and made a sortable table of the Sherwood test results. They are circa March 5th, 2022. And his comparison is at the foxmikehotel.com and I'll provide that link. And he plans to update it as Rob tests new receiver. Frank goes on to say, I've added subpages to illustrate some facets of the data. Based on my work over the past couple of years with adding price and consumer satisfaction data for each rig in his table, I've learned that it is important for readers to better understand both Rob's tests and his ranking metric. And that research published in the ARRL's National Contest Journal, I've created a composite of all nine of Rob's bench tests, which I've called the Sherwood Performance Index. It is a broader assessment of received performance than the narrow dynamic range, but is not intended to replace Rob's preferred metric. It's only a complement. Thus far, I've added two interactive charts that will help the viewer better understand Rob's table results. And there's more to come. Here is a scatter plot, fancy way of saying, plotting all the data scattered on a chart. There's an average linear regression line up the middle. The um, left-hand column is the SPI, the Sherwood Performance Index. The base is narrow dynamic range. Okay, so I'm back at the Fox Mike Hotel and the sortable Sherwood receiver bench test table. I'm gonna scroll down the page sorta of towards the bottom. And here's an explanation of the different parameters 
that are used by Rob Sherwood. And you may want to avail yourself of that information before you look at the table. But let's um, go to the table and click here. And let's see if I get this on the screen so it fits. You may want to, um, to zoom in on some of it beyond what I can do. So on the left-hand side is Rob's ranking based upon uh, the performance under the dynamic range narrow dB. So that's at, uh, at 2 kilohertz of bandwidth. And the final column, the one all the way to the right, is the, sh the uh, SPI as generated by uh, Frank. So what's neat about this is if you want to uh, sort any one of these tables, you can just click on it, and I've resorted this table. Now, there's some things on here that you may want to research or go a little bit further into uh, because sometimes the data doesn't quite display um, the way that we might want it or that there's some extenuating circumstances. So, for example, um, let's go back up here. Here's the Flex 6600, 6400. They, uh, and 6700, so there's the Flex lineup, and they're in this range of um, 111, down 111 to 118 dB. Let's resort that table and go to uh, what appears to be the best, and that's a Colin 75 S3B, a tubed receiver. And a couple of uh, flavors of that one. Uh, the FT101E, which was a, um, a transistorized, it's a hybrid, but the, the finals, the uh, final amplifier tube um, pair of tubes and the driver that were tubes but the rest of it was solid state so you can go through this list uh, next column so that's uh, the noise floor um, let's go over to this one which is the sensitivity uh, I've changed some of the data in the list that I created uh, and I'll show you why here in just a second. Um, this shows the sensitivity of microvolts for the flex at 6600 as 4.5 microvolts. Actually, it's a lot lower than that. This is with the preamplifier off. And what I did is I didn't use this data. I put in the data for the most sensitive situation. So that might be either preamp number one or preamp one and two being on, and I use that. Um, is that the best way to do it? Well, maybe not, but that's, so there's, this is with no preamp, and with the preamps on, the numbers come out very different. Uh, local oscillator noise, um, let's go over to the right here. Uh, dynamic range wide, and that's uh, 20 kilohertz for the most part and it, the, the numbers are indicated here. And this one is dynamic range narrow. So I've re let's sort by that. So the FT101D um, has pretty damn good performance. Now this is the number that Frank generated, so it's a composite number. Again, there's that um, scatter plot and this these are the numbers that uh, he came up with. Now, this isn't perfect data, nothing is. So you what you may wanna do is, um, perhaps you're not so concerned about um, the kind of front end, maybe you wanna eliminate this column. So you can download this whole chart, take it into Excel or another program, there's some free ones on the internet of course, and then remove columns and resort them as you need. Now, there's also some data that we may want to add, and I mentioned it early, um, ergonomics. For me, the ergonomics on some of these is not good. 
and it just isn't suitable for me, and that would be, I, I'm going to assign a number to that, a value, but you may have a different perspective. You may be perfectly happy with um, using a transceiver that has no knobs. I'm not. I need a knob, and specifically I need a VFO knob on the right and the RF gain, if possible, on the left, and something other than that is not desirable. Uh, for example, on the 6400M, the RF gain and AF gain are above the VFO knobs. They're at the top of the front panel on the M version. And to me, that that's just not the best situation. It's workable, for sure. It's a hell of a receiver, but it's not where I would have put the controls. Also, um, price may be an important thing. You may have a budget. Your wife may have a budget. <laughs> and... Uh, she may say $3,000 for that transceiver. Are you kidding? Um, so you may want to pair out, take a, remove the um, horizontal information for devices that don't interest you, they're not your price point, uh, any number of things. Uh, for example, you may need to uh, remote, and Flex certainly has that down, uh, and so does uh, Elecraft. So those, those may be high on your list, and you may want to give them some extra points for that. So w what is really neat is that we have this huge resource with all this data that Rob Sherwood generated over many years on receivers and transceivers. And you can see there's 141 on this list. And now we can pick and choose and sort and make a decision about what best fits our needs. Or maybe you're just curious. Um, a neighbor has a Drake R4C for sale. How does that rank? Well, actually, pretty darn good. Now, it isn't the best in terms of um, the uh, SPI. Let's see where it ranks this way. So we've got, let's do that. Well, let's do it this way. Let's say we want to sort by brand let's start with a uh, it doesn't want to do it I'll try again there's a and let's go down to Drake uh, here's the um, Drake R4C as uh, 113 point six let's just say 114 its third order intercept is at 84 and um, Rob rated it as number 36. Well, okay, but that's uh, that could have been 1970, maybe a little bit later than that. That's really pretty darn good. So if you're on a budget and you want to have separate transmitter receiver and you can get one reasonably priced, that might be a good choice. Um, so there's lots of neat stuff on here. So what I'm going to do in the next episode is show you the list that I created, the spreadsheet. And I had other parameters. I had a budget that was pretty high, uh, around $3,000. I wanted a transceiver, so I eliminated receivers. I just kept the transceivers. I also wanted to keep uh, the list narrowed down to things that were relatively new. So um, devices have been out like, four, five, six years. Anything older than that, I dropped from the list. Um, I uh, sorted that list and narrowed it down. Uh, so I had also ergonomics, and I, and I looked at the ergonomics. Some I ruled out completely because I didn't like the ergonomics. Um, so this is how I uh, came up with what I purchased, which ended up being a Yaesu FTDX101D. Um, I didn't need the 200 watts, uh, although it's it, it's great. It was way beyond my, it was an extra $1,000 that, that I um, couldn't afford, so it was not on my list. Um, some really great products like the Anan. I, I needed a front panel where I could maneuver knobs. Uh, I'm not really good with tablets and things. I'm probably not gonna do remote, although it's awfully enticing. Um, another thing, you may, you may want to add to your table esoteric things, um, there's a big word, 
like a handle. So what transceiver has a handle? Uh, the I believe the FTDX10 does, that you can put a handle on it. Alacraft has a handle. Why would you want a handle? And why does weight matter? Well, in my case, weight matters a lot, and that was a, a big negative for the ASU was its weight. But to have a handle and a relatively light transceiver means if you want to do a POTA activation, you can grab it by the handle, carry it out to that park bench, and set it up. Or when you get time to pack up, you can pick it up, put it into some kind of uh, device to protect it. We'll call it a case suitcase. Um, and and take it back home without damaging the thing, especially when you've put all that money into it. So there are things that you may want to add to your list that aren't going to be on here, like the handle, like the ergonomics, like the display screen. Um, can you hook up um, a, a LAN cable to it? Um, how easy is it to remote? Maybe um, you've reviewed the transmit quality uh, and you've seen numerous reports where it's not good maybe that's a transceiver then that you you want to keep off your list maybe you want to do a vintage station and so you limit it to the devices that are a certain age this table and this information gives us a great starting point so we're lucky to be able to visit the fox mike hotel and look at the sortable sherwood receiver bench tests take that data either wholesale as it is or maneuver it to meet our needs. In any case, I think that this information is gonna be used over and over and over again by the majority of ham radio operators. Thanks for watching. If you have not subscribed, uh, please do that. If you have any question, if you thought of something else, uh, I mentioned a handle. Maybe you've got another thing that, uh, uh, maybe it needs to be powered off of 12 volts, uh, or maybe it needs to be powered off 120 volts. Um, those kinds of things. Um, add that. Uh, maybe uh, generate your own list and we can upload those and look at it too. Anyway, have fun with it. Uh, it's a tremendous resource. resource. Um, thanks to Rob Sherwood and uh, Frank Howell for, for all this hard work. It's just a great benefit to, uh, to us amateur radio operators. We're very lucky to have it. 7-3, I'm Jim W6LG in Rockland, California. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.